All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to today's stream. Uh, first thing I want to do is just make sure the sound is working all right and there's no delay. That's what I don't want. So if you think this is kind of in real time, there might be a short delay. Um, but yeah, so just let me know and just let me know the audio is working as well. Matt Burns said, hey Gareth, how did last night finish? Did you make day two? Unfortunately, didn't make day two of the Millie. Um, busted about an hour and a half before the end of the day one, actually. Um, we, I don't know if you care, but we flatted uh, queen two of spades pre-flop under, versus under the gun. The flop came queen XX two spades, so we had top pair and flush draw. Uh, we check raised, uh, check raised, got it in against ace ten of spades, which was uh, the nut flush draw, and unfortunately the turn was a spade, so we we busted. Um, Stephen J says, good evening. How's it going, Stephen? Virgin in the chat, hello, hello. Uh, Fuzzy Ferret says, afternoon, guys. Afternoon to you, Ben. Uh, Crazy Kiss is here. Uh, MJot as well. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yep. If you'd stayed, Matt, we would have won that all in. But unfortunately, you went to bed, and that meant we busted that tournament. Um, all right. So if the sound's working well, we're going to get into it and um, do a whole tutorial stream. I'll explain more in a minute. Um, but I just want to make sure everything is all right. I've got so many. I've got three screens on the go. And I just want to make sure everything is right. PlexiQ with the subscription. And it's very timely because um, PlexiQ is going to be helping us out today. Um, with anything that comes up to do with HRC, um, so if you are a member of HRC's Discord, um, PlexiQ, aka Helmuth, is like the main man when it comes to HRC. And uh, basically, I'm gonna be doing the tutorial, but if I say anything wrong, or um, yeah, something's not quite right, or I don't have the answer because I'm not the developer of the software, um, then hopefully, how is going to jump in? Um, look at all this. I might have to turn the sound down with all of these uh, all of these follows. Um, okay, so uh, will this be uploaded on YouTube? Yes. I mean, it's streaming on YouTube. The stream always goes up there uh, every single Monday now from at four o'clock UK time. I'm going to be doing a coaching stream. Last week we did some DTO three way. The week before we did some ICM final table spots. Um, so that's where we're at. Gator Blood, thanks for the follow. Uh, thanks for all those follows, guys. Um, okay, right. Well, maybe I should just turn the sound sound down. I appreciate all the follows and all the love, guys. Um, all right, let's just turn this down. If I don't acknowledge uh, a follow or a subscription, um, then apologies. But I'm going to try and keep this to a tutorial and so that it's going to be useful when watching it back. Um, so let's say you're new to HRC and you want to come in and you want to learn all about how it works. You probably don't want to listen to me waffling on for, what is it, like five minutes now, um, just chatting to uh, to you guys. Um, all right, I think, I think we're good. We're good to go. Uh, Decky, I'm not sure if Decky's here yet, Fuzzy Ferret, but you're probably going to be all right. Okay, let's get into it. Um, well, hey guys, welcome to today's stream. We're going to be focusing on uh, Hold'em Resources Calculator Beta today. And I'm going to be showing you and walking you through how to use the software to run uh, a couple of different spots. We're going to start with this one, which is a PKO final table. Uh, the reason why is I want to show you a few things. Um, one is that if you're, you know, let's say you're just doing a card uh, cards up replay, which is where I've got this, um, this screenshot from. Um, you might not have access to the hand history. Now, if you've got the hand history, all of the bounty data, so certainly on stars, all of that data is saved in the hand history. So all you need to do is just paste it into HRC. But if you don't have that, because maybe you weren't playing this high roller, um, PKO final table, it's like the thrill um, of some description, um, then you, yeah, you don't have the hand history, then you've got to enter it manually. Um, and let's say that you want to try and work out what's going on here. Uh, you want to see if Queen Jack off is a good open. You want to look at whether small blind gets to three bet. You want to see what fives wants to do from the big blind. Maybe you want to look at the overarching strategy for the big blind and the small blind and the button and just uh, and see what's uh, see what's going on. So uh, yeah, I thought this was a good way to start because we're going to be manually inputting stack sizes, manually inputting the PKOs, 
and also we need to make sure we've got the payouts. Then once we've done that, we're going to look at a bubble spot. Um, I'll just show you this actually. We're going to look at a bubble spot, which is this one from the bigger 27, um, where we 44 left, 41 paid. Early position opens, playing seven handed here, so middle position or under the gun, seven, I guess. Um, opens and we've got jacks and we wanted to know like, okay, so what do we do in this situation? Can we induce? Do we always flat? Um, is he ever going to four bet jam worse? You know, these kind of questions you might ask yourself, we're going to uh, answer those. Maybe not today because we want to, we have to let the software run, but I'm going to show you how to set up the software. Um, and that's going to be the, uh, the main thing here. Okay. Um, and then, uh, this last screenshot is just the, uh, payouts, um, because, uh, yeah, this is just a really sort of an aside, but like when you come to reviewing these kind of uh, spots, you want to have the screenshot so you know like what's going on. You want to have the hand history if um, if you do if you can, so that you can paste it into HR uh, into HRC, um, and you also want the payouts. Um, and if you don't have that, then having the screenshot. Um, sorry, if you don't have the hand history, you can just use the um, stacks that are uh, around the table and you just manually enter them um, but we will be doing something in a bit to do with like average stack size and things like that so a bit of maths um, so yeah look forward to look forward to that um, let's have a look um, okay I might try and keep the um, keep the chat to a minimum whilst I go through this and then at the end uh, get some questions to uh, to come through so um, yeah this is this is what we're what we're working with and this is the the hand. I've got HRC ready to to rock and roll uh, to begin with. In fact, let's just um, let me just pull this in um, so you guys can see it. Might be a bit wonky. Try and make it look nice for you guys. Um, this is uh, just a hand I run. Um, no, no, don't even know what this hand is, but it's not the hand we're going to be looking at. So um, really simply then, we're going to create this uh, this hand and there are a couple ways to do it. You can just click this button here where it says Monte Carlo hand or you can click up here and you can click Monte Carlo hand as well. We're going to be looking at uh, starting a hand from a save file later on, but for now we're just going to click Monte Carlo hand and you'll see that I've already entered in all of the, um, the stack sizes and bounties and things like that. Um, let me just go back here I'm just going to make this smaller again because I want to walk through this process um, at the same time as showing you the stack sizes on the table so a few things here as I said we don't have the hand history to this because I didn't play in this final table um, we're just going to manually enter them and this is really good practice for uh, you know learning from from better players um, so there's uh, this is a high roller final table I think it's the thrill so it might be in a 1k or maybe even like if it was during a series maybe bigger I'm not sure um, but you can see that we've got, um, say, Lena, for example, under the gun, 84.1 bigs. I've put 84.2 uh, because what I've done is I've just added 0.1 to all the stack sizes. Now, if you wanted to do it, it looks like 0.125 because there's eight players eight players left. Um, but to be honest, like it's not going to make a huge difference. So I just added 0.1, and then when the stack size comes to it, they'll have about 84.1 left. So I've just done that for, for every stack size. If you wanted to, you could put the the same stack sizes in, so 84.1 instead. But you can see as we've gone around the, the table, I've just added um, you know, added the small blind and the big blind to their stacks as well. So you've got to make sure that we're adding their stack sizes in in big blinds. That's the first step when you're entering this in uh, manually, okay? Um, then we've got the bounties. And as I said before, if you've got the hand history, all of this information will come in automatically when you press um, this button here, paste stacks and blinds from a hand history in the cl uh, clipboard, also brings in the bounty information. Now, the bounties that you can see on screen is what you would win immediately. And if you're playing in a PKO where half the bounty goes uh, straight into your bankroll and half goes on your head, then uh, we're going to be doing 50% you know, 50 uh, instant PKO mode. So you've got to make sure that that is selected as well. So um, we can turn this off if we want to, but we don't want to for this example, because this is a progressive KO and you instantly win 50% of the bounty. What that means is we have to take all of these bounties and double them. So you can see Lena's bounty is 20 grand. Um, Rui's is 42,812. Hopefully my maths is right on this. Um, we've got a couple of players. If I just do this, Wizzo Wizzo and E27, whose bounties are just 5K. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's how we're going to do it. Now, if you're using any other site, you're playing on GG, they do the same, I believe. Please correct me in the chat if I'm wrong on this. Um, but basically, they show you how much you can win, and then you've got to double that amount. Now, there was a time a few years ago when it was the full bounty amount, you had to, like, it was just easy for, for doing this kind of stuff because you would just put that number in. But now this is telling you how much you will win if you eliminate this player right now. Um, and you've got to double, uh, double that amount. Okay. So that's uh, stack sizes and bounties. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense. And this is big enough as well for you guys to see. Uh, and then the last thing in terms of this part of the, of the window is adding in the prize pool. So you're going to add in the prizes for first through, I've added it to ninth. Lars Luzak was uh, bust, uh, busted in ninth, but um, I added in the payout anyway. And you can see all the payouts uh, in, uh, in here. So if we look at the big blinds, I've got one and 0 0.5. Uh, I put in 0 0.125 here, but it uh, rounds it up to 0 0.13. Uh, so that's just something to, to be aware of. Uh, I guess if you really wanted to be like spot on precise, you could change the big blind to two, the small blind to one, the antis to 0.25, and then just double everyone's stack size. But that's suddenly getting really complicated. Um, and I really don't think it's gonna make a massive, uh, massive difference. Over this side then, places paid, you can see it's just nine places paid. This is just a final table spot. Um, we're gonna look at it in a minute. So you see where it says equity model. We, um, we've got, um, let's have a look. We've got different equity models. We've got Chip EV, we've got ICM, which is just final table, uh, just one table. We've got future game simulation and we've got multi-table ICM. We're gonna be using this later on to do our bubble spot that we talked about earlier on. But this is a, um, yeah, this is uh, the one that we want, which is a one table, final table mode, basically. So we're going to be using this one for, for final tables, and we're going to use this multi-table one for anything more than you know, one table left. Um, okay, apparently there's a typo on the eighth spot for what it's worth. Um, for sure? Are you sure? 16,760? 16,760? If I've got it wrong, please tell me my eyes might be... Uh, deceiving me here, I'm not sure. Um, like, I guess if you put the 60 in, does it just round to 0.6? It does. Um, yeah, not sure. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, okay, so that's all the information that we need for this. So you've got to make sure you put your stack sizes in here. You've got to put the bounties in, but make sure you double them if it's uh, if what's displayed is the amount of the bounty that you will win straight away. You've got to put the prizes in for all the remaining players. Now, I did it to ninth, but you could just do it to eighth if you wanted to. And then we've got um, the uh, the blinds and antis. We've got uh, the bounty mode, which was the PKO. Uh, if we wanted to just do a regular tournament, we'd turn this off. And then 50% instant. Uh, there are some tournaments, I believe, on Stars that have like 30% instant, right? Um, and then maybe there's the Saturday version where this number is different, right? Um, but uh, just is something to think about. And then if we're going to do a final table, remember the equity model we're going to use is this Malmuth Harville ICM. Okay. Um, all right. So that is that. Are there any questions on this setup so far? We're going to be moving on to the preflop and postflop stuff. Uh, okay. There's a question here from Totti on YouTube. It says, um, can you explain again, why do you double the bounty? And when do I have to do this when I paste... And do I have to do this when I paste a bounty hand history? So when you paste in a bounty hand history from stars, for example, that has the bounty info in there, you don't need to double it. Uh, it will already be the right amount. If you're putting it in manually, you have to double the amount because this is the amount that you will win. And remember, it's a PKO where you only win half of the bounty. So half of the bounty goes on to, into your bankroll uh, or into your account um, and half of it goes on your head. Okay. Uh, okay, good. This is really good. Goodfella TV says, yes, why four players now? So this is a really good uh, good question. I, I always tend to just have it on, on four players. Um, you can change this to have to be a maximum of nine players if you like, but the, suddenly the game tree is going to get absolutely like huge, and that's not really what we want. Okay, so I would say four players on average is how many players we tend to see get involved in a, in a hand. If you get to a point where you need to look at what the big blind should do if it goes like five or six handed, then you could change this number if you wanted to. I definitely wouldn't have it lower than this number because you're gonna get some funky um, decisions. Like basically if you have it set to a too low, too low a number, 
then a few players could get involved in the start of the hand, like early on, you know, early-ish position. And then the players behind, they wouldn't have um, the, the actions. So the, the sim would just wouldn't work. All right. So uh, that's why I would always have uh, have four. I always just set, set this to four. Um, but yeah, if you have a special hand where there's like six players pre-flop and you want to know what your overcall range looks like in the big blind when it goes raise, call, 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 then you could do it like that. Um, okay, so let's go to the next the next page. I'm gonna make sure you guys can see see this. Uh, I have just I think yeah. So I've just I've reset this to default. Um, if we wanted to do like a simple basic one, we could do. But I honestly think that you should uh, go into go into advanced and be more happy to um, to do that. So what we really want to do, I think it's really important to make sure that we're actually looking at the spot. So let me just drag this out of the way a minute. Uh, let's see you this way. We, let's just say, we wanna say like, okay, I wanna know like button opening ranges here. Like what's the button's opening range look like raising into two players who cover him on a final table in a bounty tournament. Um, and that's what we're trying to, to work out. Um, the thing that we're gonna do is just make sure that the, for example, like the button's raise size is two, uh, we're going to start at two big blinds. So I'm just going to change that and just have his race size as two big blinds. If you wanted to, you see where it says plus one big blind? This would be uh, this race size plus one big blind uh, if you were going to be raising over uh, a limper. Now, if you wanted to, um, uh, if you wanted to do it like multiple limpers, for example, so you went limp, limp, and then you wanted to raise like a multiple of that, then you could change this number to X instead. Um, but I actually don't really tend to, to use it. For sure you can uh, you can experiment with uh, you know, limps and raising over limps and things like that. But I think as a sort of you know uh, first look at how to use the software, this is a much better approach. Now I would also add in all in, uh, which I just typed in AI then, um, and it uh, will just put in all, all in as well. The reason why I've done this is there will be some final table spots, even say at 30 big blinds, where the button wants to uh, to jam rather than min raise. Um, now, I don't think this is going to be the case in this situation, and we're not going to have time to run the whole sim today to find out. But you definitely want to allow it uh, to to happen um, to see, you know, see see what the best best approach um, best approach is. Um, okay, I'm I'm keeping an eye on the chat as well, just in case. Um, but I will again once we get through. All of the betting set up for pre-flop. We're gonna be. I'll take a moment to uh, to field some questions. So, in terms of small blind, we can do 3.5 big blinds. Again, I probably set it to three and a half bigs uh, and all in. You do the same from the big blind. If you wanted to do like, um, you know, four bigs instead from the big blind, you could change this number here. Um, in fact, hang on a minute. This is going to be this number instead. So, let's just uh, walk through that again because I went through that really really fast. So uh, big blind is only tend to will tend to raise when the when it's a, there's a limp pre flop, when it's a limp from the small blind you actually want this uh, this bit here where it says um, big blind versus small blind. So uh, yeah, this is the sort of the most straightforward approach, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is what I would would go for. I mean, as you get shallower, you could change these raise sizes. So small blind could be three x or two point seven five x. Uh, big blind versus small blind shallow stacks could be 2.5, 2.75, stuff like that. So um, yeah, it, uh, it really depends on the stack size. And I would say just, just as an aside here, that you might set it up to be like 30 big blinds effective, but the blinds might be 80 big blinds against each other, right? So it might, everyone else has like 30 bigs, then the blinds have 80 bigs. You wouldn't use a 30 big blind setup for them because they're playing 80 bigs against each other. So it really like, you might just have to go in and edit this um, each hand rather than just you know, create a preset for 30 big blinds and just uh, just load that in. Um, we're gonna come back to the questions in a moment. Um, so now we're up to three bets. So this is just raising first in or what happens over a small blind limp. Um, in terms of three bets, uh, we definitely wanna have like a normal three bet size. So for example, three X or you could do 2.75 X, but you also want to make sure you have this one X as well. And what this is going to do is make the raise size bigger as a squeeze. So if it goes raise and a call, 
we're going to see a three bet size plus one X for basically every every limper. So the, the raise size is going to be bigger. We, what we don't want to do is have it go raise, call, call and still raise to three X. Uh, it's just not going to be realistic. Um, I would also do uh, also add in all in into this as well. Big blind versus small blind depends on the stack size. Once again, you could go three X, you go 2.5 X. Um, I'm not really going to give like su massive suggestions here. Uh, this is up to you. You've got to think to yourself, right, what do I think if the big blind raises to 3.5x, oh, sorry, if the small blind raises to 3.5x, what do I think the big blind is going to 3 bet to? Is it 2.5? Is it 2.75? Is it 3x? Um, you, you're going to have to work that one out. Big blind versus others could be 3.5, could be 4, could be 3.75. We've um, got the 1x as well, and we're going to make sure that we add all in as well. Uh, small blind versus big blind could be exactly the same. Um, we probably don't need the one X in there if it's small blind versus big blind. And if small blind versus others tends to be smaller than big blind versus others. But, you know, again, you can choose the amount that works for you. Uh, if you're actually running a specific hand with uh, that you can see the sizes, then you should put in the sizes that are that are used, right? Uh, just hopefully that just makes sense. Um, but yeah, make sure you add all in as well as an option um, because the... Um, uh, because otherwise it might not get used. There is a button down here where it says all in threshold, where if the if there's more than 40% of the pot, 40% of your stack as a raise size, it would just go all in. But um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more as we go. Once we get to four bets, um, I don't like these defaults. I would always change this um, to something like 2.1x and uh, 2. Point, well something bigger, 2.3x, because um, what tends to happen when it's at 90% and 120%, what it will do is it will just push the raise size to be really, really huge, and very often off like 40 or 50 bigs, that's going to meet that threshold that we just talked about. And all of a sudden, you're not going to have small four bets, okay? So uh, small four bets are definitely used on final tables and is something that we want to allow for. So just be Make, just make sure that you change that. Um, otherwise, yeah, you, you tend to get like a you know, 2x3 uh, raise, a 6x3 bet, and then like a, a huge like 21 big blind 4 bet. Um, but if that's more than 40% of their stack, then it's just going to be an all in. Uh, and we might want to see some small 4 bets as well. Okay. Um, 5 bets I don't tend to, to look at. Um, I think by the time all those bets have gone in, I think all in is probably going to be the size. But I mean... I could be wrong on that. So now we're up to limps and flat calls. We're not going to be doing any limps today, but you can certainly add limps in if you want to. Remember what I said about these raise sizes up here. So back up to opening. If we had limps down here, we'd want to have um, like, you know, plus one X uh, to incorporate like a, essentially raising to two bigs, but adding, adding a limp on, right? But we're not going to do that. I always like to have three uh, to allow for three calls. Uh, I always get confused on this whether the big blind is included in the three, but um, we allowed it. We allowed uh, four potential players to be involved pre-flop, right? So um, we could go raise, call, call. Big blind uh, has the option between calling and three betting. If this number's too low, again, I'm, I mentioned this earlier on, where the big blind will then only have like a, an option between raising and folding, and they don't have those options in game, do they? They they actually. Um, they actually have the uh, the option to, to flat as well as raise. Okay, um, three bets as well. You could have like uh, play, you know over calls of three bets, but I tend to just leave this as one. Same with the four bet. Uh, once it gets to three bets and four bets, you would tend to see just one player. Sorry, two players in the hand. The three better and the the other player. Um, and then uh, somebody asked in the chat earlier on about does this include small blind completes or limps? It does. As you can see here, you want to check this. Um, always allows the small blind to complete. Uh, cold calls is an interesting one. Normally, I mean, this this is defaulting to not being selected, but on a final table where, let's say, the cutoff raises for off 50 bigs, the button jams for 12, small blind has 50 bigs as well, they might, ha it might be better off for them to flat rather than to, the only option to have is to four bet uh, or to, to rejam or anything like that. So, I think this is actually quite a useful button to click for final tables. 
Uh, ordinarily, though, we wouldn't see cold calls of three bets. But I, yeah, on a final table, I think it's really, really useful. Okay. Uh, I will come back to the questions, guys, in a moment. Uh, closing flats. Uh, so yeah, flat calls are always allowed if they close the action. So this is going to close, include the big blind as well that we just mentioned earlier on. Uh, all in threshold sometimes needs to get changed if you have a stack size where you would like, let's say, uh, 40 big blinds. Um, but the four bet size ends up being over this 40% threshold. It's only going to allow four bet all in. Whereas if you change this threshold and take it up, then you're going to start seeing some small four bets uh, allowed as well. Um, we're going to look at the preview in a moment. But if you want to allow small four bets and it's not happening, then you want to be playing around with the all in threshold and uh, also the four bet sizes as well. OK. Um, OK, so I think that's I think that's it for for preflop. Um, let me just walk you through this preview. I think this is brilliant, by the way, uh, just just so that we can check what's uh, what's going on. So we wanted to see what's going on from the button, okay? So you can call, you can go to 3.3x or they can jam. And then the big blind can call, can three bet to 3.75x or they can jam for 33.2 bigs effective because uh, that's what the button is opening off uh, in this spot. So this this works well. I think this is, this is, uh, this is gonna be good. Um, we do have like um, a really big stack in the cutoff. So if we were gonna, test the theory of like the uh, the four bet sizes, then you can see that um, the big blind can three bet to 7.5x. And then the cutoff actually has this small four bet, which is which is really nice. Um, but then the five bet is going to be all in. And I mean, in this extreme example, I think we probably would want to change the uh, the five bet to be a smaller five bet um, than than this one. But um, that's just a, you know, a more uh, advanced feature, I guess, for you know, those unique spots where Two players are just really, really deep. What are they playing? 131 bigs effective. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm going to tell you about this tree, uh, tree statistics and abstractions. The Now, the recommendation from Helmuth um, is that we should go, uh, if you're just sort of just average, just wanting to run a, run a spot with, you know, not a, a great deal of accuracy, but just, you know, as... as quick as possible, I guess. Then having flop at uh, 1024, turn and river at 256 uh, is the way to go. Now, this is going to be linked in a moment to the convergence indicator. Um, the more accurate the sim you want to run, the more, like the bigger these abstractions want to be. That's my understanding. Um, I'm not I'm not an expert in the abstractions, if I'm honest. Um, I've been using 4K, 1K, 1K and running it to a super high accuracy. Um, but I think if you're not going to run it to a really high accuracy, like the convergence indicator, the CI number we'll talk about in a moment, then going with 1024 and then 256 for turn and river is um, is good. Right. I'm going to run through some of these questions because there's quite a few. Uh, I do think uh, PlexiQ uh, is answering as we go as well. Um, but yeah, if there are any more questions, guys, fire them into the chat now. Um, duh, 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 duh. Uh, so uh, we had a question here. Complete is not cool versus open, though. That's that's correct. Yeah, the small blind complete is just if it folds around to them, so they have the option to to limp. Um, is the total tree size in RAM? That is correct. Um, so you can see we've got 120 gigs uh, available. This is on my server, um, which is why we can, you know, run a big tree right now. Uh, you can see I've got, uh, actually, you, you can't see it, but I've got other software open like Pyo. Um, okay, which is why there's only 52 gigs available rather than the full 120. Uh, we're going to talk about in a moment, like how to change the memory um, that you have available. Uh, do you change the threshold or just leave it at 40% was a question. So it depends if you, start, you, you know, you want to see some small four bets, but it's not, it's not happening, right? Um, and if we could see it, like if the cutoff, uh, if the small blind three bets, yeah, there's a small small four bet in here. It just uh, depends on stack size. But if you go in and you say, right, I want the cutoff to have a small four bet, but this number doesn't exist, it's just the jam, then it probably, you want to get in and, and change this threshold and make this a higher number so that it's not, you know, taking 
uh, taking it and just having the, the bet sizes all in. Hopefully that uh, makes sense. Uh, is there something to do in order to HRC to use all the available RAM? Um, yeah, I'm going to discuss that in a moment. Um, but I think that's it for questions on this. So this is all the pre-flop setup. So, you know, you can go into as much detail with this as you want. But remember that you're you know, trying to think about what the overall goal is. We're trying to work out, you know, what the button's opening range is going to look like. We want to make sure that we have appropriate three bet sizes and four bet sizes though as well, because that is going to affect um, everybody's strategy. And yeah, it might you might think, oh, that won't affect like the, how wide the button gets to open. But if we don't allow small three bets and small four bets, we only allow all ins, then the button's going to open a different range, right? Hopefully that, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, question here, can we edit for a specific position um, like giving uh, giving button two open sizes. I believe you can. You can just change this, and you can just add like, you know, let's 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 do two big, uh, two numbers that are different. So button having two bigs and four bigs. And if we go into preview, you can see they're now opening two bigs and four bigs. But I, I wouldn't ever do that. Um, I would just stick to one. Keep it keep it simple. Um, like a G6 says, you might want to change the all-in threshold to allow stuff like a 10 big blind stack opening to seven bigs and folding to multi-way action. I think that's a really good suggestion. Um, that's good. Um, cool. All right, so that's a preview. Um, sorry, preflop and the preview function. We're not going to do scripting today, but we are going to take a look at post-flop, and I'm going to get rid of these settings. So this is relatively new. Uh, up until recently, I don't think that we had donk sizes in here and raise sizes, but we do now. So again, shout out to HRC and to Helmuth for adding all of these uh, functions. So basically what's going to happen now is the more sizes we add into these boxes, the bigger this tree size is, is going to get. So if we add a, a small bet size uh, for, for geo size, um, uh, this number should, is it going to go up? going to do the opposite of what I just said. Uh, but if certainly if we add it to multi-way, we should see the uh, it go way up. Um, we'll see if that happens. So it was at 25.6 and now it's, yeah, we might, hopefully this isn't going to uh, going to affect things too, too much. But anyway, I'm going to get rid of that because it's going to make the tree size way too big. So uh, I like having like a small size and a big size. Depends on like effective stack size. If you're shallow, you could probably get away with using a smaller big size, uh, you could do like 20 and 50 or 25 and 60 or 25 and 75. Um, so just be uh, aware of that. Um, bets and bets and C bets kind of override the geo size, I believe. Let's just make sure uh, overriding the size for flop continuation bets. If empty, the default flop sizing is used, uh, which will be this one. And then if this is not empty, then we're going to use the geo size as well. So for example, you could put in some race sizes here. Um, 40% for, for, for raise sizes. And then if you wanted like donk bets to not be 25 or 66, you could change it to like, okay, I want to buy my donk bets to be a third pot instead. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's that. Um, let's have a look. So donk bets, I think this is uh, interesting. I was uh, chatting to someone about this the other day. Uh, I would always change it to always because on a final table, uh, if basically the bigger stack if they're playing out of position will start leading a lot more into a player who has a high risk premium so let's say the average stack was 30 bigs you've got 40 bigs you raise from the button the big stack's got 80 bigs and they defend we're going to start you start to see a lot more leads from the big blind so you just always want to allow that otherwise the sim's not going to not going to be right uh, so yeah, this is I think a, a reasonable reasonable approach. I mean, you could add in more of these as well. Um, I'm going to say like I'm not like a huge expert on this. This is a relatively new feature in terms of donks and raises. But I think having I think this is a this is a reasonable start. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me in the chat though if if they don't like this um, this bet up uh, bet up setup or betting setup is what I was trying to say. Um, but I think that's going to be it. I know that we've spent quite a long time about half an hour trying to set this hand up. Uh, but yeah, if there are any questions on this post-flop sizing or uh, post-flop setup, then um, let me know. Let's have a quick look in uh, in this. So 
Plexi says, one, one common mistake or danger here, we have a maximum of four active players selected. Allowing three flats versus raise first in can cap the action after the raise first in and three calls, auto folding all the remaining players. Yeah, I think we, I think I did mention, mention that. Um, I guess we could just have a quick look in this preview, right? So we have... Um, this is four players calling and now everybody else is uh, is folding. So if we want a really, really accurate sim, then we would go back to this screen and we could change the number of players in here to a higher amount. Uh, so yeah, multiple bet sizes allowed. Absolutely. Uh, the more bet sizes you allow in uh, in here, the bigger your tree is going to get. So just be aware of that. Uh, if you add multiple bet sizes for multi-way, that's when the tree is going to get really, really big. Um... Cool. All right. I think that's going to be it. So uh, let's just make sure I've gone through everything I wanted to do. I wanted to do a new hand, Pico, final table spot. We did the payouts and the bounties. Uh, we've gone through the sizing options for both pre-flop and post-flop. And now I'm going to hit finish. Um, hopefully and I'm going to bring this in so you can see it oh, maybe not it's not loving life bear with me oh we've got some movement here we go uh, so it's going to run this in the background. We might just have to wait for it for a moment. Uh, Evo says, is there a standard post-flop setting? Yeah, you can use the default that loads when you first load the software if you want to. But if you want more accuracy, then add more bet sizes. If you only allow um, like one bet size, then uh, that's not sort of reflective of how the game is played, right? We tend to see a lot more small betting. So you definitely want to have like a small bet and a big bet at least. Um, yeah, well, uh, I've not seen it take take this long to to get set up before, but it is factoring in Picos and uh, their final table as well, and it was like 20 gig big. So entertain yourselves, guys, for a moment whilst we uh, whilst we see what's going on here. We're running close with the memory limit with the second hand open. Okay, well, this might be challenging to get that hand closed now. I wonder if we can uh, close, uh, we'll close Pio. See if that helps at all. <laughs> Let's have a look. Can you share your system settings, CPU and RAM so we can have an idea when comparing with our systems? This is a server. Um, I've got, there's 120, uh, eight gig of RAM. In terms of CPU, I can't remember what it is. Uh, if I can find that, I'll post it uh, probably in the Facebook group. Um, okay, so what's gonna happen here, guys, is that the first run through is gonna be to 10M. And originally, there was we could run this to a certain number of uh, samples, and then uh, that would be it. But you can see, it's really small, but this says CI, which is a convergence indicator, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, and it says 1,426.9, which is a huge, huge number. Now, we want that number to be a lot lower. Um, but what this basically means is um, the lower the number, the uh, the more that the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The solution has converged like close to what it should look like. All right. So um, the I, I tend to run to a CI of five. I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. Um, but I think that if you're wanting to do like a basic, just a basic sim, run to a CI of 10. I think that's a good um, sort of ballpark, a good place to start. Um, but yeah, this is going to run to there. I'm going to close hand 56, you know, once. Uh, in fact, I can probably do that now. Don't save. I don't need it. Uh, okay, so this is what we're going to get. And let's just do this so you can see what's going on. First thing to say is don't ever look at these solutions and think that they're right. It's run for a tiny amount of time 
and these solutions are not going to be correct. Okay, so don't, um, yeah, I, I've seen mistakes before where uh, people will run them and they'll go like, okay, what does hijack open? All right, 10, seven off, 5% of the time. Okay, cool, king 10 off, yeah. Okay, ace 10 off's folding, right, got it, yeah. But this is just not just nonsense at the moment because the, the solution is not run for long enough, okay? So in order to run it for long enough and to actually get a solution that we, we wanna see, we're gonna click this uh, arrow, kind of white arrow on a green circle background and we are going to choose a CI, CI target and then basically the sim's just gonna run until it hits that convergence indicator target. So as I said, we could run this to 10 and we could click OK. Um, before, for a, for a while, I was doing like running to 20 and then once that had finished, you can rerun, you can click reset strategies and run to another CI target that was a lot lower. Um, but I understand now that you can just choose the CI target and click OK. You don't need to click reset strategies. All right. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, I'll just show you this. So um, yeah, I've just, running it now to a CI of 10. I'm going to click run in background. That's just going to run now. Now, if we wanted to rerun it now to five, you could actually just click this button again, change this number to five and click OK. Um, not sure why you'd want to do that, but um, it would then just, in fact, I can show you this. It would then just queue up the uh, the next run, basically, right? The next set of sampling. But we're not going to do that. Um, but we are just going to let this go through um, a little bit. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, that's how to set the sim up and how to choose a CI. The CI is, uh, you know, choose that 10 as a sort of the basic idea. Remember earlier on, I was talking about um, the uh, abstractions. So if you want to go to a much lower CI, you also want to change these abstractions to double or quadruple these amounts. That's, again, my understanding of, of how this works. So if you want to go to like a CI of three or five or, you know, lower than that you want to have uh, higher abstractions in here as uh, as well okay so question here how many samples is this ci5 um i don't know honestly don't know and i don't think it matters to i don't know that you need to know how many samples it is just recognize that you you know, want to run it to a to a low low number and it's going to take quite a while to um, to do that. So you can see here we've been running this for a few minutes now and the CI is down to 400. This uh, hand could take, I don't know, 12 hours to run, maybe even longer to run. Uh, and that's only running it with a you know, relatively small tree uh, with the 1K 250, 250 uh, abstractions. Uh, but it is a eight-handed hand. Or, uh, yeah. So if we, it was like three or four handed, the tree size would be much smaller. There are just fewer things that can happen uh, in this uh, in the spot. Uh, right, are there any questions up to this point? Okay, so Anmol says, would, was used to running it to the simplest earlier. So yeah, just choose a CI, don't worry about samples. Um, just run it to a CI of at least 10, if you're running to higher abstractions, then use a CI of five or, or under. Um, okay. So that's where I wanted to get to for this. Um, I'm gonna do, in a moment, I'm gonna show you how to do the MTT ICM as well. Um, what I'm gonna do for now is just stop this sample. So let's say that you are not running it on a server, you wanna run it, um, you wanna run it on your machine, but you need to turn your machine off because you're worried, I don't know, that it might blow up overnight uh, you you can stop the stop at any point and you can actually click this save button so what this save button is going to do is, is save a full save and then you've got this save as button which will create a viewer save and also allow you to save it as a hand config or hand configuration so if we click um, full save uh, or yeah complete save then we can just click save here I'm not going to do that right now but um, you could then just save it and then what you could do is open it up again uh, in fact, I wonder if we could just do this. Hand 57, um, let's just remember remember that. Uh, it's just going to save in the background. It just might take a while. That's the, the only problem. Um, and I, I'm going to show you how to open that in two different ways. Um, so one is uh, just a, a viewer save, um, but we'll have to open it as a, as a sort of view, uh, just to view it without editing it or anything like that. And the other option is to... Um, 
open it as a complete save, and then you can start the sampling again. You can you know click this button and, and set it off again. Um, you know once you you feel like your computer's safe and it's not going to blow up because you're you're there with it. Um, okay. Yeah, this is definitely running slower today. This is uh, this is quite unusual to see it um, run run this this slowly. So, um, yeah, we're not going to worry too much about it. Um, let's just have a quick look up here. So we've got load hand, which is what you want to use if you're loading a complete save. If you're loading a uh, like a read only hand or a just basically just a, a viewer save, then we're going to click this magnifying glass uh, instead. All right. So that's uh, the the two buttons for for opening the hand. Hopefully this isn't going to take too much longer. Uh, but as I said, like saving a complete save is just this big floppy disk and then this smaller disk with the, uh, um, never know what this is called, like I want to say Cedilla, but that's ellipsis, not Cedilla. This is an ellipsis. Uh, I think the three little dots is uh, just up here. So I'll show you that as well in a moment. Um, when you save it as a viewer save and you can't edit it, you can't rerun it or anything like that, it's going to be much, much smaller. So I like to use those for sharing uh, sharing um, the solution with students or with friends, um, you know, because the, the file size is a lot smaller. You'd be able to, you know, send it via most, uh, you know, probably an email, but also like uh, file transfer. But this is going to be super big um, in terms of uh, in terms of file size. Uh, okay, so if we wanted to now, we could just click load hand, and there it is, hand fifty seven. It's about ten gig big. Um, so that's how you would how you would load it. So I'll just show you that again, guys. You're gonna click this folder button where it says load hand, and then you can load it and you can rerun and you can edit and you can do whatever you like with it. Um, if you wanted to load just it, uh, so it says here quickly load a saved hand in read only mode, you can do the same thing. You can load a complete save with that uh, option in that mode, but you can't load um, a viewer save as a complete uh, sort of like open it and, and expect to be able to. Uh, to run it. Let me just uh, let me just show you that. So if we click save as and down here we're going to click viewer save and we're going to do I'm just going to so you guys can see what it looks like. So this time it's going to be a viewer save. It should save a lot quicker hopefully. Maybe. Uh, it does. Okay and now what we can do is we can open it up on this magnifying glass and we could click here. Uh, you can see it's a lot smaller 69 meg ish uh, versus 10 gig. All right so it's a lot lot smaller to be able to um, to to share that a lot easier. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh yeah, so if you try to open up, in fact, it probably just doesn't even let you. You can't even find the file, right? So it just won't open in that uh, using this folder button. So you have to use this one, um, but it will be really, really quick to load. Um, you can see it's already loaded and uh, yeah, it looks the same, um, kind of. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, that, those, that's how to save it and to how to load it. Um, I do want to show you how to create a hand from a JSON file. So I've been, uh, I'm writing a book at the moment, um, just in the editing phase at the moment. It's called The Final Table. You might have seen it in the down below. It says free, where it says YouTube at the moment. Uh, there's a, it will come up in a minute. The book's called The Final Table. Um, and as I was editing, I was finding that I needed to rerun some spots and to set things up how the hand was running originally was going to take quite a long time. And then I, I realized that there was this great feature where you could actually just save the, com the configuration and then load it. Um, so for example, we are going to click this button, save as, and we're going to go down here and we're going to change to JSON hand config. And um, let me just save it like this. It can't spell hand config. And it's going to save really quickly. And then what we need to do is click up here where it says new hand, you click on this arrow, and we want to click start hand from save file and hand 57 hand config. This is this one, the JSON file. And what that's going to do is just load the hand that we've just put in, um, but with all of the information, all of the setup completely the same. So the stack sizes, the bounties, the prizes, the blinds and antes, uh, what kind of tournament it is, and also your pre-flop and post-flop setup as well. So it's really, really nice. Uh, you can go in and you can edit this if you want to before you click finish. Uh, but also, you know, somebody could send you the config of their phone. They could say, oh, I've got, I'm getting some really weird results on this SIM. Can I send you the hand config and you have a look through it? And then you might go through it. You might see like some weird raise sizes or you might see that, you know, there's a stack size where, for example, like I've seen this before where the big blind was like a thousand, like someone who just left in the hand, hist like a hand history, like a thousand, five hundred, one, two, five. 
uh, but the stacks were all lower than the big blind, right? So the sim was completely messed up. So just little things like that, you can share uh, the hand configuration with other people. And that's a really small file. It's even smaller than the um, hand viewer um, sort of file. Um, okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to do with that one. Um, I'm conscious of time, but I think we can still do the multi-table sim together. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else. So sub, I wanted to do subtree sampling and pruning as well. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, unfortunately, none of these stacks uh, have something that you'd want to prune. Um, let me just take a quick look at something. So, um, all right, let's just let's just have a look at this for a moment. So under the gun opens, and EP does have three options to flat, to three bet, or to jam. Let's say that you, um, what you might find on a final table is that jam just isn't ever used, but jam was what your opponent decided to do. Um, so we would want to go in and we want to edit or, or prune one of these branches. So just as an example, right? So you might see that they, yeah, this player only wants to call or three bet doesn't jam. But actually, in practice, they did jam and they didn't three bet. So what you could do is you could prune this uh, action. And now you can see that versus under the gun, EP can flat or jam. All right. So that's just uh, something to, to keep an keep an eye on. Um, you might need to run the sim to work that out and then see, OK, this guy's not supposed to jam, but they did. Well, I want to you know, want it to reflect what actually happened rather than um, the not. Because the other thing is if we allowed small three bets and three bet jams, but three bet jams weren't used, then nothing, no hands are gonna travel down that branch, right? So then the response to that is just, it's gonna be nonsense. You, it won't, you know, it won't, won't tell you anything because there are no hands going down that branch in the first place. Um, okay. So that was, uh, that's pruning. Um, and then if, you know, earlier on we, we saw that there was like a, uh, a like a, there could be a four bet node with the two big stacks, right? The cutoff versus the big blind. So let's say we've got this. This is uh, the cutoff going for a four bet. And we want to see like what big blind should do in response to to the four bet from the cutoff. But we recognize that, I mean, of course, none of these uh, branches have been solved to anywhere near the accuracy we want uh, at the moment. There's still quite a lot of noise in here. But let's just say that we wanted to just r uh, run this uh, this branch uh, we can actually we can actually do that. Now this is not something that I've done a huge amount of, but um, you can certainly uh, run for uh, just the subtrees instead of the whole tree. So for example, if we're on this branch, then we can click um, selected subtree instead and still run it to the same you know, convergence indication or indicator and then click OK. Now um, Helm is probably going to tell me something here about this um, because he. Th he says that there's like a, often some confusion as to which branches are, are solved, right? So for example, we're looking at cutoff. What should happen, I believe, like we could say, okay, let's just rerun from the cutoff onwards. It shouldn't affect any of um, any of these, but I would like him just to pop something into the chat right now if he's uh, if he's listening, just to just to make sure that we're getting this right, because um, yeah, I think this is a. This is a common sort of misconception as to, to what happens when you run like uh, individual subtrees or yeah, rather than the whole whole tree. Uh, but let's just uh, wait a moment to see if that happens. So we can get some response from him. Okay, so this is what he said uh, in the chat. If you select the cutoff raise first in range, then sampling will process all the lines that start with under the gun through the hold hijack folding to the cutoff. All right, so um, my understanding then from that is that it, the, only, the only branches of the tree that are gonna be, the only branches are gonna be all the ones that follow this. Um, so I'll just say that again. 
If you select the cutoff raise first in range, then sampling will process all the lines that start with under the gun through the hijack folding to, um, to the cutoff. Uh, so what it means is all samples where the cutoff reaches the decision about making a raise first in, so it will factor in the folding, everyone folding in these, uh, in these previous positions. All right, let's do the multi-table ICM hand. Um, I'm gonna close, close both of these off, I think. Um, we're going to create a new Monte Carlo hand, but before we do that, let's um, take a look at the spot. So this is the bubble, 44 left, 41 paid. We have pocket jacks in the big blind playing seven handed. And for example, we wanted to know like, can we, should we call here? Should we three bet to induce? Should we jam? Um, and HRC can tell us, uh, tell us all of that. So I'm going to make this smaller again, take this out of the way and We've created a new Monte Carlo hand. Just, uh, in fact, let me just show you this, guys. I've just made this smaller so I can drag it off the screen, but uh, you just click this button. Uh, but I did show you that earlier on. So, create a new Monte Carlo hand, and we're just gonna start again. We're gonna get rid of all of these, and we're gonna put in um, the stack sizes. I might make some mistakes here because I'm conscious that I want to uh, get through all of this. So, 25.4, uh, 24.4. I'm going to do 24.5, add on a 0.1 big blind for the um, uh, ante. Uh, you can add, obviously add a 0.13 for the ante as well. But um, I mentioned this earlier on if you missed it um, as to why I would just do that for speed. Um, and we're going to change a few things as well. 26.6, we had 30.9, 31. Uh, and so you can see the, the bounties are populating down here. Now, um, that might sometimes happens when we switch between two different, um, i pull this back in, uh, switch between two different formats, but we just want it to be off here. And now you can see that the bounties have disappeared. Um, I did change the big blind back from 1000, so we didn't get the uh, error we had before. And uh, what did I want to do here? Okay, yeah, so now we want to look at the prizes and the prize is not just going to be a final table this time. So if we go to here, this is hopefully all of the prizes. And what's the best way to do this? Yeah, you guys can see this, right? So we can start putting these prizes in. Um, now there is a, a, a great tool that you can uh, that you can get that will do all this for you, um, we'll, we'll grab all of the payouts from Sharkscope, I believe, and give you a file to import. But we, I'm gonna show you the, the sort of the old fashioned method of just putting it in. Um, but you can see here now, so 10th and 11th, we don't have to put 9734 in both of these. We wouldn't have to just do this, right? We could just leave that blank and just go to 12th where it is 8190. And then we could go to 14th and just put in 6890. And they go to 18th and go 5797, and it's just going to populate um, all the other payouts. So this is a much quicker way. Uh, originally on HRC, you had to literally just put in every single payout. So if you were doing something like the Millie, it would take forever. Um, but thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. Let's keep going down. 32nd is 4103. Uh, sorry, 32nd, and then all the way to 41 is 4103. Okay. Cool. So there, yeah, we put all the payouts in, happy with that. Uh, this says, look, 41 places paid, and it says here places paid 41. Now let's take a look at the total chips. Um, the There's some quick ways to do this. I'm gonna do some quick maths now. Let's bring in a calculator though for this. Um, so the bigger tournaments, the big tournaments, they start with 5,000 chips, okay? So we can do 5,000, and there are, um, I'm going to show you something like why this isn't going to work. But, but by 228, and we get 1.14 million chips, all right? But in our, in HRC, um, let's go back here. We put in the stack sizes as big blinds. Now, what you'll need to do is to convert the current, stack, uh, current uh, blind level into like an average, or sorry, the cut. Yeah, what you need to do, let's go back. Let's rewind on this. We need to take the average stack size. Let me make this a bit bigger. We take the average stack size and divide it by the current big blind. So um, let me just show you this. So 25,909 divided by 800. So the, the average um, 
average stack size is 32.38625. Okay, uh, we now know that there are 44 players remaining. So this is how many big blinds there are currently in the tournament at this blind level. So 1,425. Now, so what we can do is we can put in 1,425 chips in here. Um, and if you wanted to go one step further than that, so you, should, you saw that I worked out there are 1.14 million chips in play. If you have the hand history, on PokerStars you get a hand history, right? And you can just uh, paste the hand history in, no problem at all. I did it uh, manually there. I'm not sure why I did that because I got the hand history ready to go. Um, but uh, yeah, for some reason I did it manually and then we got to work it out in, in, big, uh, in big blinds. Um, but hopefully that will make sense. But yeah, if you if you have the original hand history, it's going to put the the proper like chip stacks in here, not in big blinds, but in chips. And then the blinds and antis are going to be different as well. And then what you would do is put total chips in play and you put 1.14 million in here. Are there any questions on that? Because I know that I've gone through that quite quickly and that's just a way to to work it out. If you are working in big blinds, and you don't have access to the hand history. This is how you work out how many big blinds there are currently in the tournament. Uh, Evo says, don't you have to set the MTT stacks anymore, randomized automatically? Uh, we haven't got there yet uh, with the rest of the rest of the hands. So I don't think there are any more questions on that. So um, if I click next, we're not going to get to where we want to go because we've still set this equity model to be a final table sim. I'll, I'll show you this. So this just takes us through to the betting setup. We don't want that because th there are still 44 players left. We've got another window uh, to, uh, to to fill in. So we're going to change this equity model to multi-table. Uh, it says MTSNG, MTT, uh, ICM. And then if we click next, we get this new window, which is really, really cool. So if we click uh, this button here, we can say that there are 44 players remaining. Uh, we know that the average was 32.39 from earlier on, but that's just populated it because we knew how many total chips there were in play. And um, this has created, yeah, you know, we've got auto shape selected. If we wanted to, we can change the shape and put an, a different number in here. Again, I haven't done much work on, on the shapes of graphs and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, just leaving it as auto shape would be fine. I think where you potentially might run into some problems with this is if there are loads of short stacks on another table. So at the moment, it's kind of factoring in the sort of the shape of the shape based on the stacks on your table, I believe. Um, but if there were like loads of tiny stacks on another table, it might, the sim might be wrong, right? Um, okay. So yeah, this is what we're going to do. It creates this graph. Uh, yeah, so you can see here that like the, the shortest stack in the tournament is like 15 big blinds or something like that. But if there are like a lot more shorter stacks, um, I think if you, if you change this, uh, we might, yeah, you can start to see that the, now there's a short stack that's like eight big blinds instead. But again, I haven't really done too much work on this. I don't want to advise on this when I'm not like, oh yeah, 100% guys, you should do this for this uh, particular particular spot. Um, okay, so that's that is that's basically basically it because we already did the pre flop and post flop setup, right? So when we click next. I'm not going to go through all of this again. We can have different settings for sure in here, pre-flop and, and post-flop. Um, but then what you would do is you click finish and it would just run in exactly the same way as we had before. So it's calculating the equity model. That's what it does for the, um, uh, because it's not a final table. And then it's going to run up to that 10M sample again. You can stop that if you want. But remember, if we wanted to uh, run it for a lot longer and a lot more accuracy and for the solution to converge, then we want to choose a much lower CI target. So 10 as a minimum, uh, I would say, like probably lower than 10 if you wanted to. I guess that's 10 as a maximum. We don't want to go any, any higher than 10, basically. All right. So that is how to do that. I think... I think there's only one more thing I wanted to, to look at. I know that we've been going for, for quite a while now. Um, yeah, over an hour. So the last thing I wanted to, to look at um, is the memory limit uh, setting. So if I create a hand, oops, not that way. 
Uh, is this going to work? Yeah, so you can see that we've got total tree size in here, 4.1 gig. Some of you might only have like 4 gig of RAM or 8 gig of RAM, 16 gig of RAM. We want to make sure that HRC is accessing as much of this as, as possible. Uh, I'm going to bring in the uh, this, which is... I wonder if I can just show you this link. It's on their, it's on their website. Um, if you go to blog and then... Um, yeah, I'll just walk you through it though to begin with. So in order to increase uh, HRC's memory limit, we're looking for this file, this hrc.ini, and I believe I have it open. I hope so anyway. Indeed I do, here we go. So uh, mine, it, basically we're looking for the Holden Resources uh, installation folder, and then it's HRC beta in there, and then there's this one here with like a little cog and a piece of paper behind it. Um, this is the the file that we want to to open. So if I just open this again, the file will look like this. I'm going to open it and, sh and show you. Um, but we are looking for this, uh, this, this number here. And we want to allow that if you've got access to more RAM, you know, you, you have more memory in your computer, then you want to increase this second number. And these are the suggestions here. So you've got, um, like if you've got 64 gig of RAM, they recommend uh, putting the max one to, uh, max to 56. So you change this four in here to 56. Um, if you've got 128, like I have, then you set it to 120. So let me just uh, let me just show you that um, this is the file, and you can see I've got it set to uh, 120 G uh, in here. So what that means is that when we go back into HRC, HRC has 120 gig. Um, available. If we change that number to 60, then only 60 gig would be available for the software. But I think the default is like four, which is why the why this originally says four, right? Um, in here, it says 4G. If you've got more than that, and you are trying to work out like well, your tree size is way too big, and you can't, um, but you for some reason you can't run the tree because like the tree size says 16 gig, and you've got 32 gig of RAM, but it's not working then this is probably why. So you want to go in and you want to edit this um, this this number. So let me just uh, make sure you guys can see this again. So this is where mine's installed, which is local disk users, administrator, app data, local, Holden resources, HRC beta. Um, and then you click this, uh, yeah, this HRC one here. This one here is the, the, is the program. So don't click that because you've probably already got it open. Uh, but I do think that once you change this, you're probably going to have to restart the software um, to see the uh, see the changes, see the effects of that. Um, all right, so I think I think that's going to be it, guys. Honestly, I think I think that's it. Um, so what do we do? We create a new Monte Carlo hand. We did a PKO final table spot. I showed you how to do the payouts and the bounties. I explained the sizing options for both pre-flop and post-flop and the considerations there. And then I showed you how to actually run the sim and re like rerun the sim with the different convergence indicators. Um, then I uh, talked about post-flop abstractions within that as well. We also looked at how to save a hand, save a, like a full save, a complete save, and a viewer save, the smaller version. Also how to save a hand config and then create a hand from that hand config. And then also, what else did we do? Um, we did a multi-table sim and we looked at sampling and pruning and we also looked at how to view the memory limit and change it. I think that's that's what i wanted to do i think we've done it all hopefully you guys uh enjoyed that if you have any questions now i'm here and plexi q i don't know how you say that by the way is it plexic plexi q um but helmuth basically is in the in, in the chat on twitch right now and seems to be answering lots of questions which is awesome uh, but yeah if you've got any questions for me or for him then now is the time to to post them in um there is a great discord server for hrc uh it's yeah uh i don't know if i can share it on here let me see if i can do that uh yeah not sure not sure i can find the link to it right now but um uh yeah there's a, there is a there's a great server i, I wish i could uh, find the link because then i could just post it in uh into discord and uh, not discord into twitch and and youtube so you guys could uh you guys could see it um it looks like he's just tried to 
to send it. Um, if you want to send it to me on Discord, it might just be that you can't post links for some reason. So if you want to send it to me on Discord, I'll post it um, to everybody. I mean that's that. I'm not sure how I didn't how I didn't already know this because it's basically their website with Discord um, on the end. Uh, okay. So I just posted that in the chat on Twitch and YouTube, guys. So if you want to join their great um, great server, definitely recommend that. Hopefully, this has really helped you out in terms of setting up your Sims and working through the different options. Uh, this is my third video. I've done on this. Uh, this is a stream. Uh, I thought the stream would be a little bit different today because we could field questions and Helmuth could come in and, and and advise. I think that was really, really useful. So shout out uh, to him because it's been, yeah, he's done a, an amazing job. Um, but yeah, this should be the, the go-to guide now, I hope, I think. Um, the last two videos I did, so I did an original one, then the updated version, and then they just keep on bringing new features out. So uh, so now, I've yeah, I think we're up to date. This is the, the, the most current version of the of the UI. So fingers crossed, this is, uh, is going to be it. Um, all right, that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't done so already and you're watching on Twitch, hit the follow button. If you are watching on YouTube and you haven't done yet, uh, it's done so yet hit the subscribe button and the like button if you feel like you want to give uh, the video a like and uh, that really helps us out and that's going to wrap things up um, have a great week guys and I'll see you soon bye bye